All right, so we all know about the all-new cordless skill saw worm drive rear handle, and you wanted to know if it was right for you, so you clicked on this video, and it's a good thing you did because we are going to use and abuse slice and dice. We're going to make all different types of cuts. We're going to talk about all the specs. Everything you want to know about this saw, you will know by the end of this video. And yeah, just an FYI, this is the only true worm drive out there on the market today. All right, let's talk about build quality first. Holy hell, this thing is awesome. It is basically a tank. Everything on this is basically magnesium. The shoe is magnesium. The guard is magnesium. The casing is magnesium. Yep, the only wee bit of plastic that you have on the saw is around the handle areas, and that is it. Everything else is metal. Now, this is the kit that we are reviewing. This was sent over by Acme Tools for us to take a look at. Not Skill Saw, Acme Tools, and they're actually running a deal on this. I'll put a link in the description for you below. But before I forget, it is also brushless. Yes, 100% brushless. Now, what's nice about the saw is this is really their first cordless tool from Skill Saw ever. We got a 5AH battery that comes with this kit. Without the battery, you're looking at 11 pounds. And with the battery, you're probably looking around 12 and I'm just going to throw this out there, but the battery's pretty freaking big. When I first got this, I was looking for the cord because I actually thought it was the charger. I mean, seriously, I thought it was the charger until I found the charger. But it is the 48 volt, 5AH, 240 watt hours. Check it out compared to my manly, manly man hands. It's a pretty nice size battery. Now, let's take a look at a couple other things before we slice and dice. You really only do have one positive stop on the 45 degree. But it's not one of those just find that pause and stop and click. It does have a little bit of play in it, which, you know, I'm not real happy about. If you look at, say, the Makita saw where it just clicks in and you are locked in right where you want to be. I, I wish it was like that, but it's not. So just make sure that you bring that point all the way up and then lock it down. And once you lock it down, it's not going anywhere. Now, you can also go up to a 53 degree cut on this saw. The numbering is painted all white and it does stand out pretty nicely. The depth adjuster is also pretty nice. You got these cool little markings on the side. It tells you plywood and you know, your one by one or two by four. And then you just adjust it to where you want to go and then lock it down. You can see those little grooves right there. It's not a positive stop, but it actually makes your work a little bit quicker. As for the adjustments on the bevel and the depth adjustment levers, they are extremely smooth. There's really no play at all. It just lift, tilt, whatever you need to do and then lock it down. And it is solid, man. So let's talk about the max cut depth, yes. 2 3 8 of an inch at 90 degrees, 1 15 16 of an inch at 45 degrees, 1 11 16 at 53 degrees. And not to mention the 5800 RPM that the motor produces. The what? Impressive indeed, skill saw. Now we already talked about the blade guard and everything being magnesium, which is very nice. But I will also tell you and show you here within a few moments that when you ride up over any piece of material, that freaking guard just glides right over. And as far as it goes with the line of sight, it's a magnifico. And yes, the blade is on the left-hand side. As a right-handed person, I appreciate that. Some people that use the right hand, they like the blade on the left. So some people, it doesn't really matter. I like mine on the left, but check it out. That freaking line of sight. It is, yes, I'll say it again, a Magnifico. Probably one of the best line of sights I have ever seen in my life. All right, let's talk a couple more things here, and then we are going to slice and dice. Let's talk about the feel of the saw, the grip, the handle. What does it feel like in your hands? Well, there's no texture to it like you would feel on a lot of other saws. You know, like the little bubbles that you have everywhere. There's none of them. So if your hands are really slippery, eh, there's a possibility that you could slide around a little bit on it. Other than that fact, it's really comfortable in the hands. You got a nice transition from the grip to the trigger. And when you pull the trigger, it just sort of clicks and goes. So the comfort itself of the saw, it's pretty nice. You also get... The dust extraction attachment with this saw in the kit. Now, there's some things I really like about this. I like the placement to an extent. But what's really cool about this is you can fit a bunch of different size hoses in this attachment. You can see how it's designed. You just tighten it down on that handle right there. And boom, you put the vacuum on and it just sucks it right out of there. 
I will tell you, however, that there is a little bit of an issue that I have, which I'll show you here in a bit after you get subscribed to the channel. Well, you'll see what I'm talking about when we start slicing and dicing. But I really do like that attachment and how you can fit different size hoses so you don't have to have one specific size diameter. And you also get the rafter hook right here on the side of the saw. You do even get the onboard storage wrench, which is on the bottom behind the saw. And that works really nice to be able to take that blade off and then put it back on right here. You just slide it in like so, and that's it. It is also used to put your oil in. So you take that top off right there. And by the way, that also plays as your blade stop. So you just push that button there, but you take that off, you put the oil in and well, you have to, it's a worm drive, but I will tell you the one thing that I do wish they would have added was a clear window down here. That way you could tell that your oil was running low and that you needed to put more in instead of having to check all the time. Now, there are other indicators telling you that your oil is running low, but you don't want to get that close to those indicators because, well, that's trouble. So that would have been cool. Don't forget to smash that like button, by the way. It helps the video. And of course, you can put your edge guide right here in the front of the saw. Now, I think it is time to slice and dice we're gonna give it a run for the money we're gonna see what this thing can do all right so we got a fully charged battery on the back of this skill saw live by the way they said it took an hour to charge it only took me 51 minutes so under the amount of time that they stated the battery charger by the way it is fan cooled and it does do a very good job it comes in the kit as well all right let's move our way out we're gonna start out with some mdf we're going to see if it slices through, how the dust extraction works, if it works. We're going to check this out. So let's start with the MDF. I do, however, first want you to hear the blade break. Check this thing out. It stops on a freaking dime. It's just so beastly. And if you like that blade break, don't forget to share this video out to all your friends. All right, let's go. MDF first. So you can see that MDF dust is starting to come out around that blade, but it's also being directed in a certain area, which I'm going to show you here in a few seconds. But let's try a different angle. That blade riding right over the MDF, no issue. I want to show you this other angle here. Check out where the dust is actually being extracted. Yep, it actually comes out through the handle and up and up. Oh, there's our little MDF devil. Yes, MDF is the devil. So we're done cutting this. No, oh, look at his poor little feet. They look hot. Aw. All right, we are just going to go down through some pine here. It's basically one by one. If you wanted to, you can adjust that blade, but we're not going to, the depth that is. Boom, 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 boom. Right through. Couple different angles for you. Man, you can barely feel any vibration in that saw. It is insane. It's just so much power in this thing. And, and, you know, listen, we don't have anything to do with skill saw. Acme Tools sent this over for us to use. You know, there's no relationship between the skill saw and the TRZ channel. But, wow, what an impressive saw so far. Here's some pine right here. All right, let's make a couple more cuts on the pine just so you can see different views of it. So if you're cutting through pine two by fours, two by six, whatever you're cutting through, it just blasts through it. And it is an extremely smooth saw. But now we're gonna put it to the test. We are going to do a plunge cut on a treated four by six and see what it does and then we are going to just make one cut after the next in the treated timber let's see how this does yep 
Yeah, I want to do that again. And I know this saying is played out, but it's a hot knife through butter. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do one more plunge, and we're just going to start cutting down through the treated lumbar. And uh, man, I, this thing is just so powerful. Check this out. Now tell me that's not insane. I mean, there's not even a bog down to it. I mean, it just cuts right down through. It doesn't matter how hard you push through. It just does not bog down. It's actually mind boggling. Also notice that blade guard has no issue riding up over any material that we threw in front of it. That was literally insane in my membrane. Now what we're going to do is we're going to switch it over to a couple cross cuts with the treated 4x6. See how it does. Freaking awesome. All right, let's do a couple 45 degree cuts in the treated 4x6. That, my friends, is real nice life. Alright, let's talk about a couple things and I'm going to say something that I don't think I've ever said within the two years of doing this channel. There are a couple things that I wish could be improved a bit. On the handle where the dust is extracted out the back, if you're cutting at a 45 degree it sort of blows it up in your face. But you can throw your thumb over top of it and it prevents that or you can add a vac and it will stop that. So that was one of my things. The 45 degree positive stop works okay. Not the best I've seen. However, I would have liked to have seen them on all of the most popular stops. A lot of people don't care about that and actually don't use positive stops. Me, I like them. Now, let's talk about everything else. As far as balance goes, that's one of the things that people want to see. It is a longer saw. It's a, a little over 11 pounds. The balance is almost perfect. I am going to say something right now that I do not think I've ever said or maybe only said once or twice during the history of the tool review channel and that is this is a near perfect tool is the battery a little bit bigger yeah but who cares it fits in there nicely and it doesn't get in your way and i'm excited to see the other tools that they are going to be able to put that battery in such as maybe table saws or miter saws this saw is near perfect in almost every single way the build quality is awesome the line of sight is magnifico. The power of the saw is unforgettable. The adjustments being made on this saw is smoother than a baby's buttocks. And not to mention, the design of this thing just looks mean as hell. It is nearly a flawless saw. So much so that I might not even send this back to Acme. I might run to the border. I might cross over into Mexico and they'll never see me again. I will take the saw with me. That is how much I like it. Now, whether you know this or not, we actually use these tools a lot longer than just what we do in the video. I was supposed to have this video up about two days ago, and I, but I literally told myself, there has to be something else. There has to be something that I am missing. No tool is usually this perfect, and 
I, I just kept using it and using it, and I could not find anything negative about it. Again, we don't work with Skillsaw at all. We have no relationship with them on this channel, but I will take my hat off to them, and I will give them... Yes, that is an applause. We are, however, going to put this up against every other rear handle saw out there on the market. We are going to do a bunch of tool duels with this saw. We're going to go Makita. We're going to go the Milwaukee. We're going to go the Beastly 60 volt DeWalt. Look for those videos soon. I want to know what you think. Have you used this? If you have, what do you think of it? Let me know. Did I miss something on this saw? If you could, please smash that like button and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on any other tool reviews. Also, come and say hi to us if you want on the Instagram page at Tool Review Zone. I know I've seen you over there once. All right, we'll be back with more videos soon.